Are you looking at building a hutch or a coop for your quail and you're wondering what are the requirements, what do you need to consider? That's what we're going to get cleared up for you in today's video. Hey there, welcome back to another Slightly Rednecked video. Again, my name is Chris. If you're not familiar with this channel, I help you to produce your own meat, eggs, and vegetables from your backyard, your balcony, your deck, your garage, or even a spare room in your house if that's the way you want to do it. I realize that although I've covered just about every topic on quail I could think of, I've never talked about what are the basic requirements for a quail coop. So that's what we're going to discuss today. So if you're looking at building a quail hutch or a quail coop, there's a few things that you should consider. First and foremost is food and water. You've got to make sure that they've got an ac access to both food and water 24 hours a day. So you want to make sure your feeder is big enough to hold enough food that they'll eat pretty much constantly. You don't want them to run out of food. They will not overeat, but if they run out of food, then they start getting, they can, they can lead to aggression. They can start picking on each other, pulling feathers, those kinds of things. So let me show you my preferred kind of feeder here, and then we'll talk about water. So this is actually much bigger than what I need, but this holds days worth of food. The idea is the concept of how this feeder is built is what I would suggest. You can use anything from a small Tupperware container. In my other hutch, I've just got a really small one. But basically, you just cut a couple of holes in the side and you put your feed in there. And you do that for a couple of reasons, because if you leave the top open, the quail are going to jump in there and dust bath in it. They're going to kick food all over the place. They're going to shake their heads side to side. They're going to waste all kinds of food. So simple container like this, pick it up at a local grocery grocery store, or, you know, Dollar Tree, whatever. Just find a little plastic container like this with a lid on it. Cut holes in the side. It doesn't have to be anywhere near this big, half this size, or even a quarter this size. It's going to be fine for 15 or 20 quail. This will hold days worth of food for my birds. So you can you know, get much smaller this and uh, get away with uh, you know going out and feeding them every day. That's going to be fine. But you just cut a little hole in the side here. Um, as far as the size of the hole, I don't know. That's probably an inch and a half across. Maybe not. Maybe it's only one inch across. It's not that big of a deal. Um, you know, you can cut it as, as small as you can get away with. You don't want great big holes on it. One inch hole is probably plenty big enough. And about as high as your bird is. So that's probably two inches high on the container. Um, and then when you fill it up, you just fill it up to the bottom of these holes. The birds will go by, stick their heads in, and eat. And they'll waste a lot less food than if you feed them in an open container. So that's my, that's my uh, recommendation for a feeder for your birds. Cheap, easy to make works great. Alright, before I go any further, let me just apologize for the wind. Hopefully the wind noise is not too bad. I'm trying to keep my back to it so it doesn't pick up on the mic here, but if it's really loud, I apologize for that. It's just a windy day here in southwest Missouri. Alright, so let's get on to water. So you're going to need to make sure they have a constant supply of water, and that just goes without thinking, right? What I would suggest for a watering system, I use an automatic watering system in the wintertime, which consists of a five-gallon bucket with some hoses hooked up to it. I'll bring you in close for a second and show you what the water cups in the back look like. I've got links to all that stuff on another video I did. Um, I'll put a link up here. You can go watch that video if you want to see kind of how that system is put together, where to get all the, the parts to put it together. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and it's great because it, it holds a week and a half, two weeks worth of water. I only have to fill it up every once in a while. And that's good. If you don't want to invest in an automatic watering system or you don't have the ability to do that, then you can easily water them in containers. What I would suggest is to do something very similar to the feeder for your watering. Uh, a container with a lid on it, you cut holes in the side for them to stick their heads through. Because if you don't, they will get in the water itself. They will mess in it. Uh, they'll get it filthy. Um, and it's going to be a nasty mess. Plus, they'll tip it over. They'll, all kinds of things. So get a container. And I should say when you're getting feed and water containers, make sure it's a fairly square container so it's not top heavy and they can't jump on it and tip it over and spill it. I forgot to mention that in the feeders, but let's take a look at my watering system. I'll bring you in closer. We'll show you how that works. Okay, you can see one bird getting a drink out of that watering system right there, um, and that's how the system works. Uh, let me bring you in real close here. We'll show you kind of what they look like. These guys are going to freak out because I'm in the cage. Hopefully, none of them fly out. All right, so this is the watering cups that I use. They do not hold water in them, but these little plungers, when the birds peck at them, water comes out. You might be able to see that filling up here. I'll overfill it. You can see it pouring out of there. So the birds will drink all that water, and then when they stick their heads down in there to get the last drop, it lets a little bit more water out into it. These work fantastic. Really conserve your water, and uh, they just they, they do a great job. They don't keep they don't stay filthy. They they stay clean. Um, they I just can't recommend them enough. They are great, great. Uh, for watering your quail. 
All right, so with food and water out of the way, the other basic requirement for them is some kind of shelter. They need both protection from predators because everything wants to eat these little birds from snakes, rats, possums, raccoons, coyotes, fox, I mean everything wants to eat these little birds. So you need to give them some kind of protection. I would suggest a quarter inch hardware cloth for that. Um, you can invest in uh, more expensive wire, but this has done me really, really well. The only problems I've ever had with predators is I did have a fox one time that was coming up and it was grabbing the birds through the bottom of the cage, grabbing their toes and pulling on their feet. And, every, and it got a couple of those birds before I got, before I got a control of it. I put an electric wire underneath the uh, coop and that, that kept the fox away. But this is great because this does prevent, mice can't get through this, snakes can't, not a snake big enough to eat a quail anyway, can't get through this. So it, it's a great protection for them. I also use that for the flooring. Uh, the flooring that keeps them very clean uh, because all their droppings fall through the floor. So I don't have to worry about cleaning out this hutch every couple of days. Now, if you want to use a solid wood floor or a solid floor of some kind uh, with bedding on it, that's fine. You can definitely do that. Quail do produce an incredible amount of waste, so you're going to need to clean that out pretty frequently. And I would say probably every couple of days to once a week, something like that. Um, it's going to need to be a regular occurrence, though, and you can do that for sure. The other part of shelter is they need a way to get out of the weather. And you know, you'll notice I've got my roof raised up, and that's mostly so I can set things like you know, a little shovel I use to clean out the doorways and things, water bowls and uh, a little screen wire, which I'll get to here in a minute, I use to clean out the sandbox. We'll talk about that here in a minute. And also a light. I put a light up here uh, in the wintertime so I can get more eggs out of them. Uh, it's, you know, quail lay eggs depending on how much daylight they have per day. They need about 14 hours a day in order to lay on a regular basis. So when the days start getting short in the late fall um, into winter time, they'll stop laying unless you provide them with some kind of supplemental lighting that extends the daylight for an extra couple of hours. So this gives me a place to put that light as well. On this side though, I do have a closed in section. It's completely closed in all the way around. Um, and it has a piece of, uh, I think this is six mil plastic plastic maybe, uh, stapled over the top. So rain can't get in. They're protected from the wind here if it's a cold, windy day. It is really windy out today, but it's not cold, so you'll notice they're out in the outside. They don't mind that. That's not bothering them at all. But sometimes when it gets real cold and windy, they'll want to get in there and get out of the wind. They're actually very hardy. They can handle very cold temperatures just fine. They don't need any kind of supplemental heat, any of those kinds of things. But you do want to give them a way to get out of the weather if it's snowing, if it's raining, if it's incredibly windy any of those kinds of things, you need to give them a place to get shelter. Now that could be a standalone hutch like this with an enclosed area, which I'll open up and bring you guys inside here in a minute, or you could do that in stacking cages inside a garage or inside a shed or, or something like that, and that provides them with enough shelter. So hopefully that kind of makes sense. Let's take a look inside here because there's one more thing that I think is a requirement for quail, and that is a sandbox. Let me bring you in close and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is the closed-in section of my hutch, and it's completely closed off on all sides, and the bottom has a sandbox. I'm going to open the door up slow so they don't come flying out. Go, go back, guys. Go back. And they love the sandbox. Um, this isn't an absolute requirement, but I think it is something that you should highly consider for a couple of reasons. One, they really enjoy the sandbox. They love to get in here and just dust bath themselves and play around in there. So it gives them something to do. It keeps them a little bit calmer which is good. It gives them a protected area, so when, when I had the problems with the fox coming up, they could get in here and they were completely protected. The other big thing about this is they lay almost all their eggs in the sandbox. There's one back there in the corner. I probably should go ahead and grab that while we're out here. And here's the great thing about them laying their eggs in the sandbox. Look how clean that egg is. There's nothing stuck to it. It's completely clean. You don't get that whenever they're laying their eggs on just the cage floor or whatever. A lot of times you'll get feces stuck to it or whatever. But let me close this back up so we don't have birds flying out. But like I said, when you do have a sandbox like that, the birds lay almost all their eggs in there. I very seldom find an egg anywhere else in the hutch. It makes collecting their eggs a whole lot easier. Um, one thing I will say about the sandbox is you want something with fairly high sides. I've got two by four uh, frame around that. Um, of course, the front is framed in by the door and, and, and this 
you know, board here and the back is, and the side is framed in, but the other side is a two by four on end. So it's a good uh, four inches tall, almost. I mean, two by fours are not quite four inches, but you get what I'm saying. Because if you don't, if you make a smaller box and it's got real low sides, they're gonna kick all the sand out. They'll get in there and dust bath and kick the sand around. Um, they'll throw it all out in no time at all. Now with this sandbox here, what I've talked about is um, I do have this screen that I use to clean it out. So the way I do that when it gets when it starts getting uh, pretty dirty, uh, you know, with their feces or droppings, um, I scoop up the sand there and I sift out, kind of like you would like sift in a kitty litter box, that kind of thing. And the droppings stay on the screen, the sand falls through, and uh, that's how I clean it out. I have to do that once every couple of weeks or so. It's not too bad. Um, but it does need to be cleaned out occasionally, and that's what I do. And that conserves my sand. I don't have, I don't lose very much sand. Um, I usually buy a bag of sand from, you know, anywhere from once to maybe twice a year uh, to put sand in there. And that's just a 50-pound bag will help will fill this thing up. So I don't need anything bigger than that. As far as what kind of sand to use, it doesn't really matter. Um, I use play sand usually because it's about the cheapest. But construction sand works. Any of those things are fine. It's not going to hurt your birds. They will eat some of that sand. It's okay. It's perfectly natural. They're just like any other bird. They need uh, grit in their crops, especially if you're going to be feeding them something besides a commercial game bird feed, which is what I feed my birds. But if you're going to be feeding them a lot of, you know, insects and uh, you know, vegetables and some of those kinds of things, they're going to need that sand to to use as grit in their crop to help digest and grind up the food that they're eating. So that's another reason why you may want to invest in a sandbox. The biggest reason I think is. The quail just like it. They enjoy it. Uh, you put fresh sand in there and they can't wait to get in there and just bathe around, dust themselves off. It helps control, you know, any kind of pesticide or pests, I should say, like mites and those kinds of things. I don't really have any problems with those, but it is a natural way for them to clean their feathers out and to clean themselves off. So it's a good idea to make sure you plan for a sandbox in there. It can be part of your cage. They'll spend a lot of time in there and they're perf they'd be perfectly happy if the whole thing was sand. It wouldn't bother them a bit, um, but I don't find any need to go that far with it. All right, so let's talk about how many birds, because this is the other thing you need to consider when you're planning a hutch or a coop or a cage or whatever, is how many birds do you plan on keeping? Um, you can generally expect, or generally prepare, I should say, for about one square foot per bird. So this hutch is, uh, I think it's eight feet long by three feet wide, so that's is that 24 feet. My math is bad sometimes. I think it's 24 square feet, eight times three. Let's see, 8 times 2 is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 20, yeah, 24 square feet, I think. <laughs> anyway, you get it, you get the idea. So this could hold 24 birds. Now, you can push it a little bit further than that, and I could probably fit, you know, 30, 30 birds in here if I wanted to. That's, that's getting to the point where it's starting to get a little bit crowded, and if they're adult birds in mating season, you may end up with some issues with them wanting to fight. They can get a little territorial from time to time. Um, so... You know, that, that is something to kind of consider. Now, if this is a grow out pin and I'm just growing out young birds and I'm just growing them out to processing age and then I'm processing them, I could get 50 or 60 in here. It's not a big deal because they're only really, they grow so fast. They're ready to process by about eight weeks old. So, you know, with, with grow outs, if I'm putting three or four week old birds in here, they're pretty small at that point. Um, they're not taking up that much room. It's really not that crowded. And it only starts to get crowded about the time I'm going to be processing them out. So that's okay. That's the other thing I would say to consider is to plan on having multiple cages. Even if you don't plan on having multiple sets of breeding birds or you don't plan on having multiple, um, uh, you know, you're not doing meat runs, you're not growing out multiple sets of birds or any of that kind of thing. Several ex extra cages are nice to have. You may notice I have a small one over here on the side. I don't use this cage very often, but occasionally you're going to run into problems where you need to isolate a bird, whether it be he's severely injured or you're concerned that he may be sick, you want to get him away from your other animals or something like that. Um, you're going to want some extra cage space to put that extra bird in. So have an extra cage somewhere around, even if it's just a smaller cage that you keep in a shed or something like that, that you can use as a you know, nursery or a hospital, uh, you know, whatever reason that you need to use that. So that's something else to consider. And that pretty much covers it. I mean, that's the basic requirements to consider when you're building out a hutch or a quail coop. They don't really need a whole lot. They do just fine on this wire flooring. But if you want to use a solid floor cage or you want to grow them on the ground, that can be done as well. They'll do just fine there too. You're just going to have to consider the uh, 
keeping it clean and cleaning it up on a regular basis. So anyway, hopefully you enjoyed this video. You got the information you needed out of it. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, as always, God bless.